I'm going to begin, uh, Dave, asking, this is your first reoccurring role in cinema. I mean, how did you find that experience? Was it quite helpful, kind of just hitting the ground running? It was, you know, it was, it was so helpful. And it was, you know, such a, I don't know, such a luxury for me to have, because like you said, I never had it before. But also, you know, I, I always have to deal with like the jitters and the nervousness and being self-conscious, stepping onto to set with a, with a new character. And I just didn't have that in this film. And I realized when I'd done my, uh, I'd done screen testing with Palm. And so that was the first time I had ever really uh, stepped back into drag since we left out the first film. And I noticed just how comfortable I was. I just, nerves were gone. I just was so comfortable and content in this role. So it was, yeah, huge luxury. And I mean, Drax is so gloriously <coughs> deadpan. And I mean, uh, the majority of the laughs on this movie, I think, do derive from him. But were there times on set when you had to deliver a line without sort of smiling and, and everyone just cracked up? That must, there must have been a few times. Oh, more than a few times. And it usually happens like when we're all together as a cast. And it usually starts with Zoe getting the giggles because she's a very giggly person. <laughs> but once she gets and she's got such a happy demeanor. Once she gets them, it's just hard for everybody not to laugh. And I was reading to get the makeup at the end of the day, you had to sit in a sauna. Mm -hmm. It's a tough life, isn't it? And you know, you would think that that's, oh, that's great. At the end of the day, you're getting to sit in the sauna. But you think about this, after a 14 hour day, you know, you may want to sit you know, 10 minutes in the sauna, 15 minutes in the sauna, oh, you just kind of end your day and relax you. I'm in there for like 45 minutes to an hour like sweating my ass off. <laughs> it's not, like after about 10, 15 minutes, it's not pleasant anymore. It just becomes awful. And then so I sit in there for about 20 minutes and then the rest of the team comes in with chemicals and just start to peel this stuff. And it's just disgusting. And you got three guys in there sweating, hot red, just peeling these chemicals off you. It's just awful, man. And then so you leave the end of a you know, 13, 14 hour day, just completely dehydrated. You go home, get what sleep you can. And you're starting, it's an uphill battle, so, you know, starting from the, from the morning, trying to rehydrate yourself and, you know, get some energy back. It's, yeah, it's not an easy task, man. No, that actually sounds quite tough, actually. No, it's awful. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely awful. And it's quite, I mean, the, 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 there's such a huge fan interest, obviously, in anything Marvel-related. And I'm so, right. I mean, I'm sure you would have re realised and experienced that when the first movie came out, to see how much this means to people. Right. Um, I mean, can you, is it quite comparable to wrestling in that regard, to see this how much passion you get kind of get from fans, more so than you kind of get in any other kind of franchise, really? Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's, it, it's a hard to compare it uh, to wrestling. And the reason I say that is because a lot of the passion or a lot of people voicing their opinions uh, with wrestling will, will be negative. They like to really speak out negatively against stuff, and, and I think it's it's a, in a different way with uh, the MCU. I think it's much more positive. I got you know a few <laughs> a few people here and there when I was first uh, up for the role of Drax who were just people just weren't happy with it because they wanted their beloved Drax played by an actor, you know, and I wasn't really established as an actor at that point. But other than that, like after the film. Uh, came out, I get nothing but uh, you know positive feedback from fans. And now, when I if I go to like comic conventions and stuff, which I love to do, I get nothing but love. You know, so it's really they're really po you know passionate, but it's you know it's mostly in a, a very positive way. And in regards to uh, obviously Infinity War, which we're going to see Drax in again, is there, is there one Marvel character you're most excited about seeing him kind of meet and converse with? Easily, I've said for years and years and years, even before you know we'd actually been announced that we were going to be in Avengers, was Tony Stark. I mean, it's just a no-brainer. I mean, just, you know, with Drax being so kind of deadpan and literal and Tony Stark being such a, a sarcastic smartass. I mean, it's just, it, you know, it's, it makes for, for good, funny, entertaining scenes. And we do sort of delve in a little bit into Drax's kind of history in this, but I'm still interested to see if Moondragon's going to appear at some stage. I mean, <laughs> is this something that have you spoken yeah. to James about that could perhaps be explored in, in, the, in the third movie? Yeah, we, I mean, we've, we've talked about it. He, and he knows, and he wants to tell the story as well. It's all... It's all, all about whether it fits into the storyline, the whole premise of the film, and if there's just that really room to focus on that. And also, that's really getting into some really deep stuff because, you know, Drax obviously is suffering over the loss of his family. And also, he, you know, he's played with the names a little bit, so I don't know how they would tell that story. I think, it, you know, if anybody could, it would be him. And selfishly, I'm really hoping that for the opportunity to do that. Uh, but, you know, at, it's, at the end of the day, it's up to James Gunn and, and Marvel. Uh, just my final question, obviously you're still in the kind of relatively early stages of your acting career in cinema. I mean, do you find you're still kind of learning with every project? Is it still, it must be so exciting as well that it does feel like with every kind of passing role and everything, you're sort of absorbing so much. Right. No, I'm definitely, with, with each role I come, you know, I come off a film with, as a better performer. Uh, I take away something from, from everybody that I work with. Oh, it's just funny, I think people lose sight of that sometimes that I really haven't been in this all that long and I didn't, 
I never had the opportunity to go to like drama school or anything. I, you know, when I left wrestling, I worked with an acting coach for a very short time. And then once I started working, I started working. I was I'm an on the job learning actor. So, you know, I just, I try to remain working and I really do. I try to become a, a better performer. I'm very serious about it. And I think when I first started saying that years back, people didn't even think that I really meant it. And now, but I think I've proven my point by the roles I've taken and the, you know, smart character, uh, characters that I've chosen. You know, I didn't go the easy route. I went, I went the hard route, it's the long route. But just this year, it's kind of starting to pay off. Like I'm really getting, you know, not only great roles, but really just great acting roles. You know, I don't have to be always, uh, you know, the big uh, muscle head in the group, <laughs> which I am at this point. But, you know, Drax is so multi-layered that, you know, I think people kind of lose sight of that he's always walking around shirtless. <laughs> thank you so much for your time yeah, today. Thank you. Much appreciate it. Yeah, Cheers. Appreciate it, man. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey You Guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Yeah.